Hi, this is Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com, back here on Wager Talk TV with your Fade the Public Elite Eight edition for Saturday, March the 30th. But don't forget, I'll be back with an additional video for Sunday's two Elite Eight games here on the channel as well. So hit subscribe and hit the bell so you get instant notifications. Don't forget also to comment below. I read all the comments. I reply back. Let me know who you like in both of these Elite Eight games on Saturday night. All right, let's start off with the first game. You don't have to wait long to see the best team in the country play, and that's at 6 o'clock Eastern. Illinois, Connecticut, the regional final in the East. TD Garden Arena once again in Boston, Massachusetts. So no question, UConn will have a huge crowd here. Illinois seemed pretty well represented on that Iowa State game the other night. Uh, we got to figure UConn will probably have a slight home crowd edge for what it's worth. And Connecticut is just one of those teams that's hard to get in front of right now. Uh, yet surprisingly, the public is pretty neutral on this. I see some sentiment on Illinois, others on the UConn, depending on where you look. And I think one of the reasons is because the odds makers have done a pretty good job in this game pricing the public into uncertainty because obviously everyone loves UConn. They've been a dominant team now for the past two tournaments. In fact, they've won nine straight tournament games last year and this year combined, and they've won all of them by 13 points or more, with several of them by more than 20. So yes, if you're going to lay it, you're going to pay a premium now. We saw that in the San Diego State game. The line opened nine. My power ratings were nine, went up to 11, closed as high as 12. I didn't use it because I didn't want to give up that kind of line value, but I clearly said on the videos and on the TV shows on Wager Talk TV that I was not going to play against UConn, and it didn't matter. They blew, of course, um, an inferior San Diego State team out by even more than they blew them out in the title game. Beat them by 17 last year in the championship game and then smoked them by 30 this past Thursday night. Could they maybe take their foot off the gas a little bit? I guess it could be a possible letdown spot uh, for UConn. But going back even further, not just in the tournaments, but this season overall, uh, this is a team that's now won 10 straight games since the only loss in 2024, and that was against Creighton on February 20th. And they've also gone 9-1 ATS those last 10 games. The only team to cover against them was St. John's in the Big East tournament. UConn won by only five as a nine-point favorite. And keep in mind, Patino said, we're going to take a ton of threes. It's the only chance we have to beat this dominant team. And it almost worked. In that game, St. John's uh, took 22 threes. They made 10. UConn made 11 still and beat them by five. That's the only team to really push them recently. And don't forget that Creighton win, or Creighton loss, rather, came just a couple days on the road after UConn had beaten Marquette by 28 points at home on Saturday, February the 17th. So it was a terrible scheduling spot for Creighton. Actually, it was a Tuesday game, so it was three days later, two days of rest. So it was a difficult spot, but otherwise UConn is 23-0 straight up this calendar year since January 1st, and I just don't see Illinois pulling the upset. Now, Illinois is a very good offensive team. In fact, they were the number one efficient offense going into the Iowa State game, taking on the best defense in the country. They beat them as an underdog, and what happens? They actually drop a spot in the efficiency ratings because Connecticut passed them. So UConn actually is now the number one offensive efficient team in the Ken Palms. Illinois is ranked second. Big difference, though, on defense. Illinois is now at 84. They've moved up a bit from the 90s. Connecticut is sixth best defense in the country. Also a huge tempo edge as Illinois is the 69th fastest team. Connecticut just 318th. So UConn, the better offense, the better defense by far, and the slower half-court team. Yes, you're paying a tax here. You're paying an inflated line, uh, but I just don't see UConn losing this game. If you're playing Illinois, you better hope they're just going to lose by five or six, as I do think UConn advances to the Final Four. Once again, the public, pretty neutral on the side here, but they are leaning a little bit towards the over. Uh, open 155 and a half. It's dropped a bit to 155. As far as the matchup here, once again, it's going to be which team can control tempo. As UConn likes slower half court, Illinois likes up tempo fast. We do have the two best offenses in the country efficiency-wise out of 362 game teams. So obviously pretty tempting to pull the trigger with the over with the two best offenses. It's just going to come down to if UConn slows this game down or not. And keep in mind um, some similar type of teams that they played this year. Uh, they played Marquette, of course. I mentioned that game. Marquette is also an up-tempo team, ranking in the top 90s in tempo this year. And UConn held them to just 53 points in that 81-53 home win about a month ago. And, of course, uh, UConn has been just dominant in all games defensively in this tournament, holding all three opponents to 58 points or less so far. All right, that's your early game at 6.09 Eastern Saturday night. Let's look at the finals in the West region, and that goes at 8.49 Eastern approximately, and that is the Crypto.com Arena, the LA Arena, where the Lakers and the Clippers play the third game here. So once again, both of these games are in NBA arenas. Teams played here the other night on Thursday, so sight lines should not be an issue, and this should be a high-scoring game, as are all games with Alabama. Total open 165.5. It has been bet down to 164.5, a little bit of the early money 
on the under. And I think the reason is because Clemson likes a slower half-court style. So once again, just like the first game, whichever team can dictate their preferred pace really is going to tell you which way this total plays out. Clemson is in the bottom half of pace and tempo this year. Alabama likes to play fast. Clemson, the much better defensive team, but Alabama is the higher rated offensive team, but by not as much as you might think. Bama's the fourth team in offense, Clemson 24th, very respectable, but a huge defensive edge for Clemson, 32nd most efficient defense, 32nd, Alabama 103. And I thought North Carolina was going to get them on Thursday, and Carolina was up by 10 in the first half. They were running and gunning, much better defensive team. Carolina just went ice cold after halftime. Uh, I think they were like two for 17 out of the gate after the half against the worst defensive team in the Sweet 16. And Alabama still only won that game by two points at the wire. Uh, they're going to have to play better defensively against Clemson. And yes, Clemson is an ACC team that wasn't rated as high as UNC, but we just saw NC State pull the upset over Marquette on Friday night. So it, Clemson is not the Cinderella team in the Elite Eight. It's still NC State, the 11 seed. Clemson's a six seed. But keep in mind, Clemson did beat North Carolina in the regular season. And Clemson's really an underrated team. They are battle-tested, played some very difficult neutral site and road games this year, and fared pretty well. You know, by the way, they are an eight-point favorite against NC State back in mid-February. That's how incredible this NC State run has been. But Clemson lost that game to NC State. Um, they also lost at Notre Dame as a road favorite. But as I said, they also beat some good teams this season, including North Carolina, a good Baylor team just a couple games back, a very good Arizona team. They led that game from start to finish on Thursday night. Now, the one concern with Clemson is that they've been extremely fortunate from three-point defense, and I don't think teams will continue to shoot like three for 23 like New Mexico. Baylor was six for 24. Arizona was just five for 28. But with that said, Clemson does have one of the better three-point defenses in the country this year. Um, they've been pretty solid overall three-point defensively. They do give up a high percentage of shots, though, from threes. So you do have to wonder if they're going to start to fall. in Alabama, an excellent three-point shooting team. So that'll probably be the difference in this game. Bama's going to have to hit their threes. If Clemson's defense remains strong, they can pull another upset. And the line is saying all it should here. Um, you would expect Bama to be a bigger favorite, and the public is on Alabama in this game. We've seen it go from two and a half to three, but Alabama's looking like the most public side of the two games and also the over is a public play. So the public on Alabama and the over, and I do think those two are correlated, whereas Clemson and the under, probably a little bit more correlated as far as side and total and pace preferred pace of play goes. Uh, once again, public on the over in both games, kind of neutral in the Illinois-Connecticut game, and the public does like Alabama, minus three. Don't forget, if you want my official best bets for this Saturday, both college and pro basketball, don't forget about the NBA. Had an easy 19-point blowout winner last night on Friday on the Indiana Pacers. I told you in yesterday's video that I really like the NBA play. It was one of the best plays I'd seen this season, and it came through with an easy 19-point win as a four-point favorite. The NBA's been fantastic for decades for me, and we're ranked number one again this year. Sides are now 52-35 and 35 in the NBA, and it should be no surprise, nobody in the history of wagertalk.com has won more on college and pro basketball sides combined in the history of the website than I have up over 153 units of profit. We keep it going this weekend. Strong card for Saturday night. Don't forget about baseball. I passed on Friday, but I had a perfect 2 0 sweep on Thursday, winning my first free play for everyone on the site and also an easy 16 to 1 blowout winner with my first best bet on Thursday night in baseball. So, yes, we're talking college hoops. We've got two games today, or tonight rather, two games tomorrow night on Sunday, and then we have three games next week in the NCAA tournament. Not much college hoops left where you're going to make your money for the next several months is with my number one ranked NBA and my baseball as well, which has several number one rankings over the years. Don't miss out. Get the daily packages, get my weekend specials for Saturday and Sunday, or think about making money and saving money with a direct subscription. And through this weekend only, your last chance to get an instant 30% discount on a seven-day all-access pass with promo code MERRILL7. It's normally 99, but when you type in code MERRILL7 at checkout, you get it for just 69. That's two R's, one L. M-E-R-R-I-L, the number seven. MERRILL7 gets you seven days and nights of all sports for just $69. That's basketball and baseball combined, including all the Elite Eight this weekend, my NBA every night, and also baseball for the next seven days and nights for just 69 with promo code MERRILL7. Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. Be sure to check out the daily free plays as well that I post every day on my page for basketball and baseball. Don't forget also to follow me on Twitter, at Steve Merrill on Twitter and X, two R's, one L, at Steve Merrill on Twitter and X. 
Also post free plays throughout the week on Instagram. Follow me on IG. And don't forget, comment below. I read all the comments. I reply back. Who do you like in each of these Elite Eight games tonight on Saturday? Include some analysis if you have time. Let's learn and earn and win together here on Wager Talk TV. Comment below. I read all the comments. I reply back. Thumbs up, like if you found the free video useful. And make sure you've clicked subscribe so you're part of the Wager Talk family here on Wager Talk TV. And hit the bell as well so you know when my Sunday Elite Eight video goes up here on the channel. Thanks for joining us. Best of luck. Enjoy the games and stay tuned right here to Wager Talk TV for more great college and pro basketball content coming up next.